Hello face makers and welcome back to the factory. As my last video kind of started out, I was introducing you to some of my favorite sculpting tools. But another uh, challenge always comes up when you're sculpting and that is uh, how to gradually smooth down your clay. When you're working with very hard clays such as monster clay or even a combination of uh, monster clay, wax clays, even very hard plastilina, you have to slowly texture it down or scrape it down or rake it down, however it takes to get a good smooth finish. And I thought what I would do in this video is just give you a few techniques that, uh, that I've learned from other sculptors and experimenting on my own to help you along with that next challenge when you're trying to sculpt something that's relatively smooth. If you're doing a lot of wrinkles and, you know, textured alligator skin on something, it's one thing. But if you have to get something very smooth, uh, say for instance you're sculpting a woman's face, not a lot of texture, not a lot of wrinkles on it, you need to smooth that down. And there's a couple of techniques I'd like to share with you on, to help you do that. Uh, one technique, of course, is to uh, you use your various tools to uh, get it down to a smooth finish. You may go into it with a guitar rake. This is a guitar rake and it's a bass string rake. Now these are great because you can get down to a very fine, fine finish. And the reason we use a rake is it, it scrapes off the surface, but it hits all those little micro bumps that show up. And if you're using a smooth, rounded tool, even of this shape, it's going to leave indentures. But when you scrape across something with a little rake, whether it's a hacksaw blade that you've made or purchased, those types of tools, or even a guitar string rake, it's going to get rid of those micro fine pieces that you don't want to be there. The next thing that comes into play is a lot of people use um, a solvent like alcohol or acetone to break down the surface of the clay because it slightly dissolves the clay. One thing that I've learned, especially on the harder clays, is a little bit of naphtha. Now naphtha is a, uh, it's a solvent. Uh, you can get it in a, uh, I guess, a naphtha substitute. It's better on the environment. You can use naphtha to smooth down the clays. To uh, hit large areas, I use a auto cleaner brush. And this is a very stiff brush. You can dip it in the naphtha, smooth it and scrape it over the surface of your clay. And then move from this brush to, let's say, a more of a stencil brush. It's a firm brush, just not as, just not as, uh, I guess scrapey as you could call it, as, as your auto cleaning brush. From that, you can go into uh, another stencil brush, which is more of a fine, dense area for getting into areas, uh, like in the corners of the eyes and under the eyes around the nose. Then you can go in with a smaller, a smoother brush. This is like a, a, a chip brush. Um, you're going to find a lot of hairs come out, so you gotta watch it, pick the hairs out as you go. But um, if you comb the brush out really good with a, a, a fine tooth comb, you get a lot of the loose hairs out. And even if you take a dab of super glue around the base of it and let it dry, it'll help anchor any leftover loose hairs. So, you know, as you work your clay, you'll, you'll work it down with your naphtha and your auto parts cleaning brush. Now, if your naphtha is too strong, if it's dissolving your clay too much, cut it with 99% alcohol. You know, 50-50 is a good way to go. That's usually where I start. Uh, incidentally, if you're ever cleaning out molds and you really got to clean them out fast in the clay, nothing like this and pure naphtha and you'll clean that mold out really fast. Then you can go in with, you know, a rag and wipe it out. That's the fastest way i found to clean my molds out. So um, once you move beyond these tools to smooth down and get your surface, that's when I go into using a little, uh, a little baby powder or it can be you know, cosmetic powder, but just a no color powder in a little container like so. And that will uh, kind of get that finish down to almost that beaded texture like you'll see. Uh, now, one thing to, to think about it is if you really want to get that texture down, when you do the, uh, the powder method, you can always take your hands and buff it as well. And that, get it, that gets it fairly smooth. What it gives you is a uh, kind of a very fine, like a stucco type of a finish on your sculpture. Now I'm working on a piece here that is a generic face for sculpting masks on. Um, what I want to do 
is take away a lot of the fine details and just give a generic face to sculpt on. So I want a nice smooth finish, almost like a mannequin finish. So using these techniques and these tools is going to give me what I need. Uh, this is another little, great little tool to get. This is an awesome, another kind of like a cleaning part uh, brush that you can use. So these brushes, along with uh, the solvents and the powder, will help you refine your sculpture down. Now let's take a look at my sculpture as it is so you can kind of see how it's coming along. Now I've smoothed down most of it with my solvents. Now I'm moving right into the powder stage, so I want you to see that. Okay, as you see, half of this is powdered and half is not. You can see that the texture is pretty smooth, but it is a little sticky from the naphtha. So just taking my, my little powder container here, getting your powder on it, working it around, smoothing it around. You can even use a, a rougher brush in this, but this is a good, a good brush to use. Something of this matter. Something of this manner, and that'll give you a, a, a good finish so that you can see a good smooth surface. And this is, again, this is a generic head for sculpting on. But as you apply the powder, it'll take any tackiness or stickiness away. It also helps you see if you have any flaws in your sculpture. If you see an area where there's a few divots you don't want, it'll help you uh, find those places and you can go back and correct your sculpture. So this is kind of a, a, a great technique for working your sculpture down and getting rid of some of those you know, bumps or lumps you don't want. And just using your hand, you can really buff it down and give it a nice smooth finish. This is a good way also to um, apply to the surface before you mold it. I mean, this has got a finish on it. It's very slick. Um, you know, a lot of times we will spray crystal clear spray uh, acrylic spray on our sculpture which has a tendency to basically ruin our clay so if you don't want to uh, contaminate your surface of your um, clay with crystal clear spray use powder it allows you to reclaim your clay and reuse it for another another sculpture or let's say for an example I'm sculpting on top of this and I create a character I powder it get it all perfect make my mold if I'm making a silicone mold or something like that it's going to be easy to peel off and then if I want to start with the sculpture as it is and alter that sculpture say stage two or stage three of that same character uh, you can just take the clay that's already in place and change the sculpture it's a lot faster that way let's just say for example I'm doing a chimpanzee character on top of this hoping that the mask will fit a human face. I sculpt my chimpanzee character. I make my uh, flexible mold. I peel the mold off. I change it to a gorilla. Sculpt my gorilla. And all I'm doing is adding and altering the facial features of the chimpanzee. Then I want to make a mold on that, peel it off. Then I want to do, let's say, an orangutan. I will take away or scrape or sculpt or alter what I want to get my orangutan character. And what that allows me to do is use the same clay on the same base and create a mold that I can then use for three different characters with basically the same clay. Now, if you're going to make a mold, a plaster mold, that's a little more difficult. You're liable to uh, lose quite a bit of your clay, but in the same sense, you'll be able to reclaim that clay because you have not contaminated it with a crystal clear plastic spray-on coating. Powder is fine. It'll uh, kind of blend back into the clay as you're working it. Usually I will put my clay in a, uh, a small oven on some aluminum foil just to get the clay warm. So as I'm sculpting it and moving it around, it's like sculpting with water-based clay. So hopefully, these tools and this little technique will help you out. And, uh, and all I can say is happy sculpting. Well, I hope you learned something today. Pass it on to your friends. Use it for yourself. 
write it down, and come back to see us at the Facemaker Factory.